In this video, I want to show you the dialogue denoiser that Isotope introduced in RX3, but I want to show it to you as a plugin. Now, the other really good news is with the introduction of RX4, Isotope have moved the dialogue denoiser from the advanced version, where it was in RX3 advanced, into the regular version of RX4. So this plugin is now available to all RX4 owners. It has two modes, manual and automatic. So automatic is more like the adaptive mode that was available in the RX4 advanced version of the spectral denoiser. But here in the dialogue denoiser, we have the auto mode and the manual mode, and both are available in the regular version of RX4. So we start with the auto version, just leave it in auto and just play the audio. Let's try it. Hey, it's Russ here at NAMM 2012. I'm back with Bobby Lombardi. Bobby, some people don't know that you, were, that you were one of the people behind 11 Rack and all of that kind of stuff. And we can leave that just playing in auto. And the great advantage is as each new clip comes along, it will simply modify its profile straight away, automatically and straight away, to handle the noise in that clip. And then when the next clip comes along, it'll process that one. So quite often, I just leave an instance of dialogue denoiser on my interview tracks, or my sync audio tracks, and just allow it to get on with it. But if you prefer to have a little bit more control over how the dialogue denoiser processes the audio, then you can go into manual mode. So if we go into manual mode and reset, just as we did with the spectral denoiser, we just highlight a section of audio, and then enable the learn button and play. And there we have our profile. So now we can use that hey, profile here at 2012. I'm back with Bobby in the Lombardi. audio. Bobby, we can know that edit you were, you were any of, the of these anchors. Rack and all of that kind of stuff. Are you a, so we a can change the profile. All about how that all happened. And then when we're happy with that profile, we could automate that. So for example, here in Pro Tools, we have all the automation options. So I could automate all of those parameters and then write the automation to Pro Tools for this clip and then move on to the next clip, learn that one, write the automation, and then I've got complete control as to how the dialogue denoiser processes each individual clip. Now, the other key thing to remember with dialogue denoiser is it has no latency. So you can leave it as a real-time plugin on your tracks, safe in the knowledge that it's not going to mess up your sync. Now here we have the hiss example that I've been using in previous videos on denoising within RX4. And so again, I could use it in auto mode, just set it up in auto and press play. And immediately it starts creating a profile recorded item and responds to the audio as it plays through. Recorder. So I can do that, or just as we did with the spectral denoiser, we can get it to go into manual and then get it to learn the profile and now it can use that profile this is a typical example of a poorly recorded item using a dynamic microphone or I could go back into auto again this get it to learn the profile a poorly recorded item when I'm happy with how it's learnt it on the domestic hit the manual and now I've got that this set. is a typical example of a poorly recorded item using a so we've two ways of, of creating a learned profile. We can either give it a bit of clean audio or we can put it into auto, get it to learn the profile and then switch over to manual and then it holds those settings. And then again, we could automate those settings, put them into the automation data, in this case in Pro Tools. And then every time that clip is played, Dialog Denoiser will use those same settings. Now, you may remember in a previous video, I recommended that with spectral denoising, it's sometimes better to process a clip with two lighter weight passes. So rather than trying to have a lot of noise reduction in one pass, do two passes, each of which is reducing the noise by a smaller amount, but when put together, gives you that level of noise reduction that you want. We can do the same sort of thing with the dialogue denoiser. So we've already got one instance in there. So if I just turn the target off and we put that one over there and then we create another one. So I've just used the Alt key to copy a second one. And so now we have two instances of Dialogue Denoiser. I could just run them both in auto. This is a typical example of a poorly recorded item using a dynamic microphone on a domestic mini disc recorder. 
or we could use the conventional learn feature so we can highlight a bit of clean audio turn them both into manual put them both into learn and play so now they've got their noise profiles so now they'll work in series this is a typical example of a poorly recorded item using a dynamic microphone on a domestic mini disc recorder so you can see that by using two in series we can get a significant amount of noise reduction so now I've got 24 dBs of noise reduction but because they're zero latency there is no delay so again, even using two in series, I have no worries about the denoising process upsetting the sink. So I'll see you again in another video.